So we have a lot to cover, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, again, I am recording this. Um, it's gonna be available on HILSC's website if there are people in your organization that wanna take a look at it in the future, and I'll just share it with Houston Food Bank. Um, and uh, I'm Katie Atkiss. Did I say that already? I, I can't remember what I've said so far. Um, so uh, thanks for joining us today um, to, um, talk about food resources in COVID-19. So this is the fourth um, webinar we've had in this series. The first was an intro and then we did one specifically on housing and one specifically on um, on uh, workers' rights. So those webinars, uh, the first one is up on our website now. The second two are not yet, but they'll be going up this week. Um, this is the last one we have planned, so if there's additional topics you'd like to cover, please put it in the chat box and um, we'll see what resources we can drum up and uh, plan something for the future. Um, so I'm really happy today that we have not one, not two, but three um, people from the Houston Food Bank here to share their expertise with us. Um, so um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves and they're going to kick it off um, and then I'll come back uh, towards the end. Go ahead, Myra. Myra, you're muted, if you can unmute. Can you see the PowerPoint? Yes. Okay, perfect. So real quickly, we'll just introduce ourselves. My name is Myra. I am the Capacity and Operations Manager at the Houston Food Bank. Uh, I have two of my colleagues here today. I've got Susan Quiros and Carolina Camarillo, and they're both the community referral specialists. Uh, and so they'll share a little bit more about themselves, um, but we're gonna jump right in because you know we, we wanna be respectful of everyone's time. So our team is comprised of 22 um, available navigators and specialists. We have a little bit larger team, but these are the folks that are responsible for working with clients directly. We were established in 2006 with Feeding Texas and we became a part of the state outreach plan through Health and Human Services. We are responsible for assisting in Houston and the 11 surrounding counties. The Houston Food Bank as a whole assists in 18 counties, but our program specifically works with 12 of those 18 counties. Uh, traditionally, the Houston Food Bank works in, uh, excuse me, the CAP team works in three capacities. We work on site at the Houston Food Bank. We work at um, our pantry on site as well. We work in the community um, either in distributions or on site at agencies. Normally, we average about 46 to 48 distributions a month, um, and this just basically means that we come out with a distribution truck to assist clients with, us, with resources and also um, try and meet their food needs at the same time. We currently partner with about 190 agencies. Some of those are just referral agencies. I would say about 120 of them are actual agencies that we go to and that we work on site um, with clients directly. Things are a little bit weird right now because of COVID. Um, but so we want just kind of want to update y'all on our current model. We are still assisting in the 11 surrounding counties. We're being a little creative and we're making sure that we um, can assist people on site if necessary. We've really minimized our agencies. I think we're working with 28 agencies right now and trying to figure out a plan on how we're gonna roll out um, a, a model that allows us to be on site to assist clients. We are also um, providing assistance at the mega distributions around town. So at IAH, at NRG, um, we were helping at the Cypress distribution and we were helping at the Bennington Center um, and helping some of the HISD employees there. So we've been able to roll out some on-site models since COVID occurred um, and, and we're looking to roll out 28 to 35 additional agencies starting July 1st. So there will be options for your clients. Um, right now, we do partner with, with agencies virtually, either via email, via phone, um, our website, and also through GoToMeeting or um, by paper application. So we are looking to integrate those 
those agencies beginning July 1st so that we're able to be out in the community more often. Uh, some of the programs that we currently help with are SNAP, Medicaid, CHIP, um, Medicare Savings Programs, TANF, Healthy Texas Women, Long-Term Care Services, and then uh, through our referral pr program, which Susan and Carolina will speak to a little bit more, and we assist with prescription discount cards. Uh, I know that today's webinar is it's discussing programs that are available for individuals with immigrant status, but I do wanna, wanna make sure that we touch on these programs. While I know that state public benefits, um, some of the requirements can be stringent, and a lot of our current clients have a lot of questions, especially when it comes to eligibility, how it's going to affect them. And I know that Katie's gonna talk a little bit about public charge, but I wanna just talk a little bit about these programs because we wanna ensure that people are not uh, afraid to sign up for programs that may not affect them. Um, when we talk about SNAP, Medicaid and CHIP and all of the other state public benefits, um, aside from TANF, those benefits can be, um, can be utilized by individuals that do not have uh, you know, a citizenship or, or that are not current residents, if someone in the household is a U.S. citizen, it's not going to affect them. It wouldn't, um, it wouldn't affect them when they're trying to become a U.S. citizen. And we can talk a little bit more about that later. But I do want folks to understand that there are options for families that have individuals of immigrant status if someone in the household is a U.S. citizen. So basically how this works is a client can reach out to us or they can go to one of our agencies and then we can assist them right there in person. Um, they can apply through your Texas benefits and we can walk them through that process if they feel more comfortable doing that. We can walk them through a paper application um, or we can send it through fax, whatever model is more convenient for them. Uh, and normally takes anywhere between 30 to 45 days is if they are requesting um, state public benefits for medical services and 30 days if they're requesting food resources. Some of the things that we can help with is renewals. So if a client currently has benefits and is in need of just submitting a renewal form, we can do that for them. We can also do change reports, uh, making sure that people always update their, their changes within 10 days of that change. That can be employment, address, because um, a client will lose benefits if they do not make that change within 10 days. And then also verification submissions. If Health and Human Services reach, reaches out to the client to say that they need a certain documentation, a client can always come to any of our locations or can call us and we can send those um, verification submissions on their behalf. Thank you, Smyra. So the Houston Food Bank has a variety of programs that help alleviate hunger for everyone in the community, from children to seniors. All the programs mentioned are gonna be available to families with immigrant status. Uh, so our first program is our partner services. Um, this is probably the most vital when it comes to food resources for our community. We don't ask for any sort of, um, we don't ask any eligibility questions when it comes to someone's citizenship status. It is just basically um, who's in your household, what, you know, what is your name? Um, they'll, they'll probably ask some basic um, like date of birth questions, but nothing regarding their, their citizenship. So what Partner Services does is they work with 1,500 community partners within our 18 partner network, and then you see, excuse me, within our 18 county network, and you can see all of the counties that we're participating with. We work with two CBOs, which are additional food banks, excuse me, three, um, and that's Galveston Food Bank, Montgomery Food Bank, and Brazos Valley Food Bank, to be able to cover the 18 county service area. So the 1,500 community partners can be anywhere from community, centers, um, the YMCA, it can be um, schools, a place of worship. Uh, I mean, the options are endless. We can pretty much partner with anybody um, at this point, as long as there's parking lot space and, um, and there's folks that need food. So we're currently the largest food bank in the nation in terms of distribution. Also size, I think there's like a food bank in Italy that has a vineyard, and so they've kind of got us beat. But um, but when it comes to distribution size and, and to building size, we are the largest in the nation. Um, and while that's kind of like a, you know, you don't want to be the largest uh, in the nation when it comes to feeding folks, but we are really proud of the work that we're doing. And, and we understand that there's a huge need, um, especially during COVID right now. Um, we would normally distribute between 500,000 pounds of food a day. 
And right now we're anywhere between 1.1 to 1.9 million pounds a day. Um, and so we've rented out additional warehouses. I think we're at three right now. And so our partners have gone up. Um, last year we distributed 104 million nutritious meals. I mean, and we're on par to probably hit 150 this year. So, so who knows um, what, what this year is gonna bring. But, but they, basically what you would do is your client could call our, our helpline or they could reach out to one of us. Um, we have 1500 partners in the community. So the client would then be routed based on their zip code to the partnership net closest to them. There is no limit to how many times this individual could go. Um, a lot of these partners, if it's, it does depend on some of the partners, they'll tell you you can come once a month, but there's so many partners that a person could literally go to a different partnership every day if they wanted to. Um, and Susan will talk a little bit, bit more if there's a client that has some transportation issues. So one of our programs would be Backpack Buddy. One in four students in the Southeast Texas area rely on school meals to provide breakfast and lunch. So Backpack Buddy works to fill that gap on weekends and holidays by providing take home meals. To enroll in the program, parents would speak to the school counselor and are required to have free or, re free or reduced lunch status. For Kids Cafe, um, we provide free and nutritious meals after school and during the summer in community locations where children gather. 18 counties are served by Houston Food Bank. Meals and supplies were um, given to 300 sites in the 2019 fiscal year. Kids do not have to be enrolled in school or in a school program to participate. School markets are set up like small grocery stores at a consistent location within a school's campus and have set distribution schedules. This program is intended for middle and high school age children that outgrow other HSB programs and they're run for the students by the students. So it helps them build up social skills, customer care skills, interact with clients and make an impact in their own communities. The Senior Box program manages the Commodity Supplemental Food Program and is designed to improve the health and nutrition of income eligible seniors that are over 60, well 60 or over. Through this program, seniors receive a box of non-perishable food items that are valued at $50 each month, which helps stretch their available grocery dollars. This program currently serves about 11,000 seniors each month at 300 different sites. Um, for all of the programs mentioned, eligibility and requirements are listed on our website at houstonfoodbank.org, and as well, you can check our locations where we currently serve. And I'll jump in real quickly. So the reason that we wanna go over these programs and I'll kind of highlight them again, um, I know that we're looking for services for individuals of immigrant status, but I, I wanna highlight these programs because even though the kids are not in school right now, we wanna ensure that everybody knows of the services available. Um, and so when you see Backpack Buddy or when you see a school market or something like that, there's a lot of parents that don't know that this is an option. I was telling Katie before this that I was working with a client a couple of months ago, like maybe a month and a half ago, where um, the client had never heard of Backpack Buddy. And so we were able to connect her child with the teacher to, to request that the child be enrolled in the Backpack Buddy program at the school. And so one thing that the Houston Food Bank has is we have you know, an abundance of support and an abundance of food. And so a school's backpack buddy program is only determined by the school. So if the school says we only need 30 backpacks because those are the children that we enrolled, um, we can grow that if the student is in need and if the student reaches out to the teacher as well. Because right now the way that that program works is the teacher kind of identifies kid kiddos that are food insecure, but there's some kiddos that aren't going to tell you, you know, and so we want to make sure that you all know these programs, that there's school markets in the area. School markets don't limit to just the people in that school. So if you you know, are down the road from Sam Houston High School and that's not the school your kids go to, but you know that they have a school market, you can utilize and get food there. Um, you can go to the distributions at the schools as well. So even though the distribution is um, catering to that specific school and that school is hosting the distribution, it is open to the community. None of the Houston Food Bank um, distributions have any zoning restrictions. Um, we, we don't turn people away. So uh, that's why I said, if there is a distribution in the area, if you see a Houston Food Bank truck, you can just line right up. You don't have to um, pre-register. You don't have to 
you know, meet some sort of eligibility criteria, especially for those types of distributions, you just walk up. A lot of the times we won't even ask for proof of anything. We just basically ask you to come and get your food. Because of COVID right now, most of those distributions are run through a drive-through model. So you would just have to stay in your vehicle. Um, and there are some options for folks that don't have vehicles or there are some transportation options that we can also offer. Um, hi, my name is Susan and I'm gonna be um, talking about a little bit about the referral partner program. So we rolled out this program in last February. And basically what we're trying to do is assist clients that are looking for things beyond food. So let's say that a client applied with us. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> Hello? Oh, thank you. You're good, we can hear you, Susan. Okay, I'm sorry. So, I'm um, sorry. So yeah, so let's say that we have a client that applied with one of our navigators and that client was applying for SNAP benefits. If the client, uh, wants to join us, he's going to be referred through our network and we can assist those clients. Basically what we're trying to do is connect that client with all the organizations that are already establishing, you know, here in Houston. So we can assist those clients in those needs. So how are we gonna be identify those needs? So we have to conduct an, a needs assessment and I want to like um, just emphasize that throughout those questions, it's going to be like between 18 to 19 questions in that needs assessment we are not gonna ask the client anything about citizenship or any um, legal status. So basically what we're trying to cover is the needs that they have in the household. And in order with that responses, we're gonna be uh, referring the client to the organization that can assist them. Uh, what we're trying to reach here is that the, client, the clients can reach self-sufficiency. That means that they don't have to come again and apply again for the SNAP benefits or for other benefits. Um, once again, at this moment, I don't know if Maida can just go to the next, to the next slide. Okay, thank you. So at this moment, basically, during COVID-19, like we know that most of the agencies that we use to refer our clients, either they have changed the, their requirements or either they have changed the way that they are assisting our clients. So um, what we're trying to do is reach out to those agencies, have an updated um, let's say like updated, um, updated list of those agencies to know, okay, so I'm going to be referring this client to those agencies. You're going to be needing this. Most of the, most of the agencies at this moment, they are looking for clients who can do all the requirements over the phone. Basically, they're not asking anything else beside an ID and it doesn't matter what type of ID you have. At least you need to have like a photo that can show that you are you. And basically just to prove them that you have been affected by the COVID-19 uh, um, situation and you're going to be receiving that assistance. So um, for food assistance, the three, I would say like the three main um, agencies for just to say that we are using at this moment, it's going to be CrowdSource Rescue. So CrowdSource Rescue, basically the Houston Food Bank has having this idea, beautiful idea, to provide this food to clients by delivery. So let's say that we have a client, we come across with a client that probably doesn't have transportation, or probably that client at this moment is in quarantine or is in or is elderly or is disabled. What we're gonna do is just to go ahead and place a ticket and order for that client. It's going to be basic questions like where the client is living at this moment, the age, it's going to be also at the, at the very bottom asking them for the income. And also it's going to be asking for the household members. And at the end it's going to be also, they have to also describe a little bit the situation they're going through. And that's the reason why they are asking for um, that, let's say that that uh, mode. Um, and if CrowdSource Rescue consider that the client is in emergency, they're going to be delivering the food between three to six days. But the feedback that I have received from my clients is they have received the food between 40 to between, sorry, between 24 to 48 hours, which is really, really great. Um, secondly, we're also using the food pantries, the food for change market locators. Why we're using that at this moment? Because um, the Houston Food Bank, basically Food for Change pantries, they update every day that information on those, those pantries. So what we're trying to avoid is to send a client to a pantry that probably is closed and probably they're not going to be receiving the assistance that they need. So the first thing that I do is just go ahead there. You can just click in that, in that link. It's going to take you to that main page. You can just put your address or you can put either the zip code and then it's going to show you 
The map is going to show you all the food pantries that are available. You just have to click in one of those and just, you can see the requirements. At this moment, they do not have any requirements. As Myra mentioned before, what we're asking to the community is please just be patient, go there. It's going to be probably a drive through distribution model. They need to understand that we're trying to avoid any contact between volunteers and clients, once again, due to the COVID-19. And uh, they don't need to register, they don't need to sign up, they just need to go there ahead of time and just be in line. And the third one is going to be the lead partnership. So that was also a really, really good surprise for us because we, we received last week 200 codes so we can assist clients. Once again, uh, we don't, we're not going to ask anything. Uh, the only question that we're going to be asking is like, how we can help you. And, and we, if we identify that they are in need of food, we're going to be just using one of these three um, programs. And for Lyft, what it's going to be is we're going to be giving a code for the client to go to a pantry and also another one just to co just to come back to their homes and it's going to be for $20 each trip. So I would say this is uh, a really, really good help that we can be using. Um, Maida, I don't know if you can go to the next slide. Thank you. So um, also, we know that all of our clients are asking for rent and utilities, utilities assistance. Unfortunately, at this moment, there are, uh, it used to be more agencies helping with this at this moment. What we're trying to do um, is update the, the organization that either has still funding or, are received, or have received funding in the, in, the couple, in the next two or three weeks. So we already know that Baker Replay, they had the funding um, between May 15, they opened the application, but they already, um, there is no more funding at this moment, unfortunately, so we cannot refer more clients there. Uh, but we used to, like, I would say, like, we refer, like, between 15 to 20 clients to Baker Replay. Um, the second one is Catholic Charities. We always, that is the one that we're using for either rent or utility assistance. We know that they are assisting our clients at this moment. That is the feedback that we collect from each client that we serve every day, Carolina and I. And also for West Houston, for West Houston Assistance Ministries, Ministries, I'm sorry, and also for Bend County. They, are, they also are assisting the clients, but we need to know that for West Houston Assistant Ministries, you need to live, they are zip code restricted. So you need to live within the zip code area. And for Bend County, they're still open, they're still receiving um, assistance. Um, the client can get up to uh, $2,000 until November if you are looking for assistance for rent and utilities. But you need to live in Harris, in, from, sorry, in Fort Bend County. And the last one, and the Harris County Social Services, we just only use that if, we, if the client is looking for utility assistance. So the process is going to be over the phone. They just need to call Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, they're going to be doing, like a, let's say, like a needs assessment. And the thing that they're going to be, the only requirement that the client needs to, um, to meet is that they need to have a child under 18 years old in the household at least one. Um, I was asking and I was having a conversation with some people there and they were telling me like, we do not ask any other thing just to provide us that they have a child in the household and as well that they are, um, they are also income restricted. So they need to also show them that they are on their, you know, like certain level of income. Um, for employment opportunities. So the Houston Food Bank now is um, partnered with the Smart Shift. At this moment, we are open to enroll, let's say that were to hire people, um, once again, that undocumented individuals. So the only thing that they are asking at this moment is to have access to a cell phone valid ID. That means it can be either the passport or either any other type of, that sometimes they say matricula or cedula. So if they have something like that, it's going to be valid as well in an active bank account. So some of our clients probably they do not have uh, a bank account at the moment or probably they don't want to open a bank account but they need to know that it's important for us that it's not going to affect them in any way and also if they have an IT number it's going to be easier for them to have access to a bank account to open a bank account so um, as well they just going to be there is no drug screen or background check necessary they're going to be receiving um, the paid is going to be $15 hourly 
and they want to be working 40 hours a week. So that means that they want to be receiving 1600 weekly. Um, and also the pay is going to be every two, every two days. So once again, this is a great opportunity that we are also referring our clients because there is no other agency. There is no other organization at this moment that, um, have this opportunity for our, our community. And, and one thing I'll add to SmartShift is, um, in case you want to know the type of work that they're doing, I'm working with SmartShift on site at NRG Distributions, um, at IAH Distributions. So these folks are working with the Houston Food Bank. So we're not outsourcing them or sending them to other um, agencies. They're working with us in the community. They're helping us um, distribute food or they're helping us work on site in our pantry. They're working in the um, conveyor belt line, making sure that we get food packaged and things like that, working in our kitchen. So they're all smart shift employees. And like, like Susan said, we do not ask uh, anything except for those requirements and they can definitely be undocumented. And I think everyone in smart shift is undocumented right now. Um, for classroom curriculum, and I'll go through this really quickly. It's just basically, um, it's the model that we offer for folks that want to learn how to start doing things on their own. So we understand that we assist some clients that are right on the cusp of being able to do things on their own. So one of the things that you always hear, um, you'll hear a food banker say is that we want to put ourselves out of business. And I know that that's like the hokey thing to say, but it is true. We want to make sure that clients aren't having to come back to us every six months to renew their benefits. Um, and so classroom curriculum is um, available for those folks that are wanting to do it you know, at home or are wanting to learn how to submit their documentation via the mobile app, um, that are wanting to, to learn how to call 211 and check their verification of their status, uh, their benefit status without having to come in. One of the most heartbreaking things is being at an agency and having a client show up at six in the morning with their kiddos standing in line to make sure that they turn in you know, a document that could have, they could have just taken a picture of that document and not had to come to our agency. So we wanna make sure that we are empowering clients to know how to access food resources, how to apply for benefits on their own. Um, and so that's what the classroom curriculum model is. So we have a mobile snap classroom, like a big old mobile classroom truck that we take out to the community where people can come in and can um, utilize that classroom there. Or we work with some agencies that allow people to use their um, technology, their computer labs, um, or we also can assist clients through GoToMeeting or by phone and kind of walk them through to be able to use the classroom curriculum model. These two, we'll make sure to send out the PowerPoint at the end as well, because I know that some folks are going to be um, needing to, to call 211, and, and this is the best way for you to navigate your client um, when they call 211. It's super convoluted and it's very difficult to get a hold of somebody, but if you follow these prompts, you'll be able to get to somebody a little bit quicker. And so when we send out the PowerPoint, you'll be able to have these prompts so that you can share that with any client that you, um, that you work with. And then the, the main way of how to partner with us. So how you partner with us right now, um, because of COVID things are a little bit weird. And so normally I would say, go to one of the 190 agencies that we work with. But right now what we're doing is we're doing a lot of virtual assistance and we do have some agencies where you can go in person, but, this is the best way to partner with us at this point. So um, let's see, we can assist you with a classroom curriculum workshop. We can assist with an application. Uh, if you're currently partnering with HFB as a partner agency, we can also provide a food distribution truck. We can give you CAP literature or discount cards or refer you to any of our CAP services through a referral partner. If you are needing to refer a client to us, um, you can either give them our link to the Houston Food Bank, and there is a quick questionnaire that they would sign. It basically would be their name, their phone number, and their email if they have one for us to be able to contact them. So they can either do the SNAP assistance inquiry form if they feel like that's a little bit more private. Um, and then we, again, we can send this out and you can have access to that link. So you would just give them that link. They would fill that out. Or there's some agencies that collect a referral sign-in sheet. Um, that's what the SNAP inquiry form looks like. They would go to the website, they would click on the inquiry form and a quick pop-up would uh, become available and they would put in their name, their phone number, and then we would contact them within 48 hours. Or if you would like to sign them up directly through our email, you could email us at cap.resource at houstonfoodbank.org. A lot of the agencies that we currently work with because we're all working remotely, 
Um, they just collect a sign-in sheet for the clients that come in for the week, or they can send it every day at the end of the day, or they can send it every other day. It's, it, it's up to you what frequency you want to utilize, but you send it to the CAP resource inbox, and then we try to keep the same standards of returning those calls within 48 hours. And that's it. We kind of rushed through that, but um, I do see that there's some questions, uh, and I'm going to leave this up, this screen up, so that you have access to my information. If you want to refer the clients directly to our helpline, where they can get access to uh, a pantry near them, it's the same 832369, but instead of the 9213, it would be 9390. And I'll put that in the chat box. Um, let me see. All right, I've tried to answer the questions as you've gone through it. Thank you so much oh, cool. for all of that super helpful information. But please go through and look just to make sure I didn't miss anything or misrepresent anything. I'll put the, the helpline in the chat just real quickly. Great, thank you. And if you could also um, stop sharing your screen, then you can put cool. your in the chat box too, then I can share mine. Um, Hi all, again, I'm Katie Atkus with Hilsk, um, and I am going to, um, to share with you some additional resources, um, if you can believe there's more than everything that the food bank um, just offered. So uh, let me get to my page. Okay, and, oh. I'm on the wrong slideshow. Sorry, guys. It is surprisingly difficult to um, to um, both manage, try to manage a, um, a, a webinar and present at the same time. So bear with me for a moment while I get myself together. you guys see my slideshow? I don't, I don't think I can at this time. Okay, thank you. Okay. Okay. Okay, here we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, so uh, I, I want to introduce you to, if you're not already familiar with it, accessu.org. Um, and this is a, a website. It's open source. Um, it has a lot of resources on here. You can see there's a food category. You can search either for a specific agency or by program. By open source, I mean that all information in this database has been provided by people just like you. So um, please go and search your agency and update it with any information. Um, but you can also, of course, use it to um, search for resources for your clients. Um, so another resource that we have is our, um, we have a living resource guide, which is actually a Google Doc, and the URL is there. Um, I just updated this this morning with food resources, um, so please go ahead and link through and you can see it. Um, I'll pull it up in a moment as well. Um, I also wanted to go over uh, public charge one more time. Um, so just to remind people, this is only applied at certain points along the immigration path. Um, and uh, so is basically when you're coming into the country or applying for a green card. Um, so, uh, so it's not uh, it's not applicable to everyone who's an immigrant, um, and it's not applicable for people that don't think they're going to change status in the future. But if people are seeking to change status in the future, it, it could um, apply to them at that point. Um, but really, it's a totality of circumstances. So it's not just did this person use public benefits? Forget it. They they cannot. Um, they cannot. Uh, 
get the status that they're seeking. Um, it un falls under income and assets, but it can be offset by other positive um, positive factors, uh, such as um, you know you're getting a college degree, and then you will ha then have the skills um, to get a job that would ensure that you wouldn't be quote unquote a public charge in the future. Um, so public benefits that are um, that are looked at in the new public charge rules include um, some of the programs that the Houston Food Bank went over. Um, but again, there's also, it's not all or nothing. It's really the totality of circumstances. Um, so for local funds, they consider cash assistance, um, but not disaster relief. So that's another thing to look at in the COVID-19 funds is that disaster relief is completely exempt under this. Um, so I am going to stop sharing that screen and try my technology skills and share this other screen. Um, and what I want to show you here is um, the disaster resources for immigrants. So this is the, um, this is the, uh, sorry, disaster resources for immigrants. So this is the um, COVID-19, this will lead you to the COVID-19 resources uh, Google Doc that I told you about. Um, and uh, I also wanna point out towards the bottom, there's also a couple of papers about COVID-19 if you're looking for more information, um, but more directly for resources, you can go straight to um, this document. And I wanna let you know that this is actually being actively um, updated. Like I said, I just finished the food um, this morning. So what you see at the top of the page um, or the top of the document will actually be slightly different than, um, or slightly different format than towards the um, bottom of the document. But the biggest thing for this is to make sure that you have this little toolbar on the side. And this is basically your table of contents. So if you go down to food and meals, sorry, my computer's super slow. Um, there's information about cash assistance, um about meal programs so there's the summer meal sites for hisd as well as other school districts um there's the um, houston parks and rec curbside meal distribution um there's food pantries and deliveries including the hisd fresh bus um the crowdsource rescue which the houston food bank presented on um there's the pantry locator um here and as well as some other sources, including Target Hunger, Kids Meals, The Beacon, and then there's a list from the City of Houston Office of Emergency Management, which is slightly redundant of the list above, but I um, did pull out these two resources that I don't have on that list. So um, again, this is open source. If you, see, if you know of resources that aren't here, please share them. Um, or if you see resources that are out of date, please also share that information. Um, and the idea of both Access U and this resource list being open source is that um, the re responsibility of keeping information up to date does not fall on one person because we're all getting information from other from um, places all over. And so with all of that coming together, we just wanted to provide you a venue to bring that together so that you could find. Um, you could find the information you're looking for. Also, I want to point out there's a pet food resource as well. So um, don't let those sweet dogs and cats go hungry either. Um, so that is everything that I have right now. So um, I want to open it up to um, questions, um, to discussion, to open it back up to the Houston Food Bank if you guys have anything. Um, and I will also look through the chat box. So um, Myra, this one might be for you. Um, Brianna says that she saw on the partner locator map 
um, at least one partner subscription said by appointment only. Is that true? Um, because uh, you also mentioned you don't need to register, you just have to show up. So if you could clarify that, that'd be great. Yeah. Uh, some of the partners do need to update their, um, their information. Um, we have asked our partners to open up extended hours to include some weekends. Um, so some of that stuff may have been for during the year because we have so many partnerships. Um, but, but I know that because of COVID, we've really asked our partners to be a lot more lax. Um, one of the things that I recommend is for the partner to reach out to us through a referral partner program because those girls, the two girls that are on this call, the, the two young ladies do a fantastic job of ensuring that they refer somebody to an agency that is open and that does not have requirements. So if for some reason the client is coming up uh, and, and kind of hitting some roadblocks when it comes to a partnership, um, have them go through our referral partner program and we can make sure that we find them a place for them to get food. Great, thank you. There's also a couple of questions about SmartShift. Um, one is asking for a website address and one is asking how one applies for SmartShifts. Oh, I see Carolina answered that. Yep. Sorry. No, no, you're okay. Um, I'm trying to catch up too. Just... Um, if anyone has clarifying questions about Carolina's um, response, please feel free to unmute yourself or throw something in the chat box. Also, if for some reason someone um, is not tech literate or they don't have a cell phone, um, but for some reason they have access to, to any of the state public benefits, so if they've applied for SNAP or Medicaid uh, and they receive those services on behalf of a family member, then they can receive access to um, an assurance wireless. Or there's a few. There's a few organizations, a few um, companies that assist with smartphone um, assistance, where the client would be eligible for a free smartphone. And what I'm seeing now is that there's um, text and internet. And I it used to be like 350 to 500 talk minutes, but I think it's unlimited now. So that's another thing that you could reach out to us um, if if the client doesn't know where to go, they can reach out to us um, in our department and reach out to one of the two young ladies on this call and, and we will help them link up with uh, cell phone services. And can you tell us where you find that SmartShift app? Caro, you wanna to speak to that a little bit or? Yeah, it should be in the app store. Um, I had a uh, talk with some of the SmartShift people on Friday and they did show me but it was through the Google Play and it is true right now that I googled it through the App Store it's not showing up so I'll try to follow up with them and see why that is okay for a uh, lift I see an average of um, because the pantries are located in their area most people are averaging anywhere from eight to twelve dollars a ride we're not really sending someone super super far um, I think the the most I saw a one-way ride be was like seventeen dollars um, recently. But even then, we give them basically a forty dollar credit, so they get twenty dollars there and twenty dollars back. And Carolina, did you see um, Natalie's question about the um, Smart Shift app? There's oh, well, that might be it, actually. Yes, I'm trying to look into it right now to see if okay, those are great. the ones. And thank you, Hanya, for sharing that about the um, yeah the citizen and free phone programs. Uh, there's no limit right now uh, to the lift. And and for Hanya who shared that, um, I would say send them over to us because we do have some direct contact with those partners and we do have some partnerships in place. Um, with any of the partners that we're going through for the referral partner program, we have MOU signed. So we make sure that um, we have an open line of communication and maybe there's something that we can do. So definitely don't hesitate to um, send the partner, I mean, excuse me, send the client our way. And then for Lyft, not right now. So Lyft is super generous and, and they 
um, gave us 200 this month for us to be able to kind of test and see what we need. Normally we schedule rides through the concierge service system with Lyft, but because of COVID, um, they're trying a new model out and so they're sending us codes. So they sent us 200 for this month. They're gonna send us 200 ongoing for every month. Um, because it's such a new program, a lot of folks don't know that it exists right now. And uh, we do have the flexibility of asking Lyft for, for some additional codes. So if a family is struggling um, and they're needing access to our ride, you know, once a week, I think that for right now we could potentially accommodate that. And then Carolina just posted the link for the app in the chat. Are there any other questions or any other resources that people want to uplift for everyone? Well, if not, I want to thank again, um, Carolina and Susan and Myra for, um, for taking the time to be with us today and to provide us all of the, all of this information. Um, it's super useful. Um, finding out about no, more programs and getting clarification on some that I was familiar with already. Um, let's see. In order to get a contact with a community referral specialist, do clients just have to call? Myra, did you see this last question in the yes. chat? Susan, um, do you want them to go ahead and just email? You go ahead, Susan. Yeah, so if they want to just reach out to us, uh, they, can all, they can call if they want to the main line or they can just send an email. I don't know, Maida, you posted that. I can just put here the CAP resource inbox so they can reach out to us. Yes, um, Susan, are y'all still using the HFB referral? They can also use that one for just for y'all? Yeah, that's fine. Uh, can you put that email in the inbox? Because sure. the HFB referral inbox um, it's just honestly, Susan, it's the only one that checks that one. Uh, the referral specialists are the only ones that check that one. The other um, email that we sent y'all, the CAP resources, if someone is wanting to apply for any state public benefits. But if you're wanting to reach them directly, um, she'll post the HFB resource email in the chat. I also want to thank everyone that joined the call today. Um, to to get this information and to share it with your clients so um it was super super useful and again i want to make a plug if you have any updates for either accessu.org or for the resource list um, please go ahead and just add them directly if you have any questions about how to do that you can reach me at katie k-a-t-y at houstonimmigration.org and i will put my email in the chat box as well. Um, and I'll make sure that the chat goes out to all of you in addition to um, a recording and the PowerPoints um, or a link to all of this on the HealthSk website. So thanks so much, you guys. Uh, you have the gift of eight minutes with your day. Enjoy.